Hey everybody, it's Lee again from Creative Aging Program with Arts Council Oklahoma City. This week we're going to revisit pen and ink and we're going to do a pen and ink birdhouse drawing. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to combine the skills we've learned with the pen and ink fish, which is cross hatching, hatching, and we're going to add to that with the um, cross contour. And I'll explain that here in a minute. And then we're also including some of the stuff we learned with the watercolor barn painting, which is just simple structures. And then we're going to add a little trees in there. And you don't and you can have a bird or not. So and all you're going to need is you know heavyweight sketch paper is what I'm using, but you can also use copy paper if that's handy. And we're using again an ultra fine sharpie. You can use a felt tip pen if that's what you have, and then a number two pencil because that's everyone should have that. All right. So and even though it doesn't say it, yes, this is simple, and you can do this. All right. Let's get started. There we go. Now I've got a few. What I did is I went ahead and started. Um, I have a few examples that I drew out um, just so that you didn't have to watch me draw everything. What I'm going to do is um, do the ones that are probably the most different. You know, some of these are going to be nice and simple uh, shapes that I know you can you can handle on your own. The ones that are a little different, I will do on the video. So since I already have this drawn, I'm just going to start going over the pencil lines with the pen. Same thing with the fish. Just focus on the outline and get all of the information in there, and then you can come back and do all the detail work. Some of this detail I started with the pen, which you know, I didn't really, I mean, with a pencil, I didn't really need to do that, but uh, I did it anyway. So I like the look of this birdhouse. It's a little different, so it's kind of round. It's got a little conical shape. So I'm just going to jump in here, and I like the idea of having some flowering tree or something, and you can make, just, you can just have leaves if you want, or you can have, you know, totally different kinds of flowers because this stuff is kind of made up anyway. This one is actually hanging from the tree from a loop, so I know what I need. Got my, my table is a little wonky, so yeah, I'm going to put this cardboard underneath here to make it flatter for me. So, and then like I was talking about last time is for the... Um, drawing, just get in all of your information and you can have lines that go through your flowers to just make sure you're not having to stop when you're drawing your birdhouse and then you can come back and erase it later. And now remember, this does not have to be perfect. I, even though we're doing a little houses, I'm not using a ruler. I personally like the little looser feel of things, you know, but I want you to do whatever you are comfortable with. Because I know some of you out there are going to break out your rulers on the ones that are not a roundhouse. So, anyway. So, basically, I'm just going to come in here. And since I know it's going to be shingles, I kind of give a little dart up there. Ooh, this is a really big one. So, that's okay. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Okay, and then on what I was talking about a little bit ago on the cross contour lines, that's when it's, we're basically doing a different kind of hatching, you know, we're doing hatch marks and cross hatching, a contour, um, cross contour line is where we're actually doing a curve to give something some three dimensions. So like here, you know, I think I probably showed you, but I didn't maybe name it a cross contour. So it just gives it a three dimensional look just because it's curved. All right. 
That's a really big shingle. You know what? I might actually have to make that into two, but that's... Here again, we're just kind of making stuff up as we go. Okay. And, you know, you can change your mind when you get in here, too, when you're doing something. When you're drawing it and you're not really sure if you like your lines, feel free to adjust. Okay. Here's the... And this one, I don't have a bird in it, so... And look, I didn't quite make this rounded, but that's okay. If it's too perfect, then no one will think a person actually made it. So, all right. I pro perhaps I should have started with the one that had less information in it, so you didn't have to think you have to do all this work, which you really don't. This one happens to have a whole bunch of flowering stuff, and you know, I and you can just do like little dots. Like a little bit of stippling effect for the center of the flowers that makes it easier so you're not having to draw a bunch of circles and just do a little you know some hatch marks here just to kind of give it some little visual interest and two what you can also do is just get all of the outline in first and then decide how you want to fill it in because maybe by the time you're finish doing your drawing and you kind of have an idea of how you want it to really look. And see, like, I'm not worrying about whether I'm following the pencil lines exactly because this is not about, you know, being perfect. For those of you out there who want to be a little more accurate, that's totally fine. <laughs> So this one, since it, I'm just gonna jump in here and start with doing a little wood. And you can do this any number of ways. This one just has a little bit of kind of wood grain information. And you can have something that looks really weathered if you want it, or something that looks a little more like a new, part of a new build or a new structure. Like this one here, the one of the other birdhouses that I'm going to include in the example will have a little straighter lines and look like it's a newer birdhouse and not made maybe out of an old log or something. So these are just really kind of simplified, really pared down for just giving a little bit of um, texture to the wood. And so then I'll just add a little bit more here on the shingles. And then you, there are different options for filling this in because, you know, this would be dark inside the birdhouse. I like the idea if you, you know, put lines closer together, that gives a sense of, a lot, you know, something being a lot darker than if you space them wider apart. It would seem like the surface is lighter in color. And like I said before, I personally like the idea of having white in between things so it's not a totally solid black, but you can use the fine tip Sharpie and certainly fill it into, if it, you know, so that it's solid if you want to. These come down to your own personal choices. Mm -hmm. So... And then you can come in here and you can add, you know, some other lines to kind of show that this is a, at an angle. You can do a little cross action too. And that cross contour, see, because by curving the line, it's in keeping with the three-dimensional curve. So, 
And then basically you just keep on adding to your picture. And apparently I wanted to do a whole bunch of leaves and flowers. So thank you for sticking with me. These are a little different shape here. Okay. So see, this is just really simple. You can, and yeah, if you want to do a more elaborate leaf shape, certainly feel free. Same thing with the flower. You can always do something more um, involved or even more simplified. I just like to show something that's relatively simple in shape so that, you know, you all, though I know you can do it this way, you can look at it and go, oh, okay, sure, you can, I can do that, which I know you can. I know I'm kind of bouncing around, I'm just, and then sometimes I can't even tell what I was drawing, but. Okay, so now I've taken a little bit of time to finish this up, um, and just to talk you through some of the stuff I've done, you know, I did more cross hatching, and you can do it however you like, but this is just a way to kind of add some visual texture. And I did a little stippling with little dots to kind of give it a little shading. And then I added some more in here for the wood. And you can make your wood look like whatever you want it to. Same thing with the flowers. I kind of added a little more to them. And you can always do more or less. You know, it's whatever you're feeling comfortable with. But this just gives it some more dimension. And I still did the, um, the contour you know, the cross contouring on here where you make it look a little more three-dimensional instead of flat. So, and I kind of started with one that had a lot of information. And if you like the shape of this birdhouse a lot, but you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many flowers, and guess what? Don't do all the flowers or, you know, do certain ones. So just make it, you don't have to have it have as much information as this one does. That's always okay. All right, and so I've decided I'm gonna actually do this one as the next one, which is a little more straightforward, traditional birdhouse looking. And I also have a little bird in here, and you don't have to have the bird if you don't want to. I just thought he was kind of cute. And then also this one has a nice big tree branch that I'll kind of show you how nice and easy it is to do texture of wood. So what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead and start outlining. As you can see, I've rubbed my hand across this. So like I've said, I think in another video is if you want, take another piece of paper and put your hand on it. If you're one who kind of can't keep from putting your hand on the paper, <laughs> which obviously that's me. So I'm just gonna kinda of go in and just get the basic shapes of everything and not worry too much about whether it's exact or not. And you can um, change the shape of your birdhouse if you want to. I just kinda of thought this was a nice shape and really pretty straightforward. And I like the little bird, but, and you can draw your, the rest of your branch, you know, just going off the paper completely if you want. These just kind of float in the middle, and if that makes anyone uncomfortable, certainly you can have them go off the page. So, let's kind of get in here and do the edges and... And also, just a reminder, as with any of the video lessons I'm talking about, just embrace the mistake. You just incorporate it into your design and art. Because sometimes you'll be like, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, and that's totally fine, just keep going. And if you can erase it and you feel compelled to erase it, that's also fine too. But, um, I'm sorry, I'm moving the paper around. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go over my little 
bird. So. And then see here, you know, the, you know, depending on, you know, if you're building a birdhouse or not, <laughs> wood slats aren't necessarily going to be even. And so I'm just embracing that in this, how they're not necessarily evenly placed. So. But if you go, well, I don't really like the look of that one, then change it. I'm just kind of, I like this one to have a little more of an angle, just for fun. So. I'm just going to do it how you like it. So. And then this one, he doesn't have a bar, you know, poking out like the previous one. This is just like a little ledge. So I'm always kind of make his little ledge sitting here. Not that he's sitting on it right now. And then I'll turn the paper back in just a minute. But see, I'm not really worried about it, that line flopping down in here. It's okay. Same thing with the opening. Ooh, that's a little... Look, I'm embracing the mistake. Mm -hmm. Just go over it again. This is just to have a little bit of shadow in here. It's... I'm show a little dimension, but since it's really a flat design, I'm not going to have too much perspective. And that would be another lesson unto itself anyway. So let's see if I can keep my cute bird looking kind of cute. And I'm just going to kind of get in the basic information here. Mm -hmm. And I'll come back and work on him more. So, you know... And his tail probably wouldn't be coming on top of the roof, but that's okay. We're going to leave it. And I'm hopefully not going to make him be an angry bird. He's got his little feet right here. Ooh, he looks a little angry. But I kind of made him smile, but... <laughs> not that birds really smile, but maybe they do. This is this little thing he's sitting on. Okay. Alright, so we're just going to continue adding the... And see, look, these leaves are super simple. And if you want to do maple leaves, specifically oak leaves, feel free. You know, or you can do red bud, you know, and also do more... Um, flowering trees, whatever you're feeling like. And see, I'm just kind of keeping the branches looking a little loose, so. Because I like the idea of just getting, as I've said before, just getting all the information in, and then you can decide how detailed you want it to be or how simple, simplified you want it. Because sometimes... If you put in all the lines you have down first, then you're like, whoa, that's more than I really wanted. So I just kind of like doing this and getting the information in here. And then when I turn it back to where I can see it then. And see, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting in the main information of the um, branch itself. Because now I'm going to look and see if I like the placement of the leaves. Because it might seem a little too, all, you know, too symmetrical or not, you know. So, when it may seem just fine and just right. So maybe I want to change the direction of this one. So I'm going to go in here and make some leaves that hang down this way. And you might believe that just looks horrible, and that's okay, because I'm just gonna. You don't have to do that <laughs> this way either. And I might go, wow, I probably shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. We're just keeping on. I'm gonna do a little one right here. So, see, you can just kind of see what you're feeling like, and you may go, well, Lee, that doesn't look like any real leaves on a tree, and that's totally fine. This is just an exercise in. You, you know, different line work. So what I'm going to do is even though I have leaves right there, I think I'm just going to leave, you know, maybe do one up here. 
I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe do one little funny one. So, what I want to show you, and if you want to put a leaf later, you can. It might have some tree bark going through it, but that's fine. So I'm trying to sh do this in a way that you can see it, but okay. So I'm not even going to put any pencil lines really to dictate how I want the bark to look. But since the branch is going this way and the bark will follow the length of the branch, we're just going to kind of follow it loosely. And then what I also like to do is if you want to have like a knot in there, I just kind of do that and then just kind of just, and then I put a leaf in the way. That's okay. So let's see how I'm just kind of just loosely just kind of having fun with it. So there's really no right or wrong way to do it. And you can even just do something long like this and just keep it simple that way. But if you have a big leaf in the way, you don't want to draw across your leaf or it will, you know, <laughs> interrupt your leaf. So I'm going to come over here and do another kind of little knot looking thing and then just kind of come down and have some parts of it come this way. And so you can just just kind of have fun with it and then usually they all kind of come together but I just kind of stopped and started a little bit so this was not, a, this was, you know, what would be kind of considered a little more stylized, which is totally fine. But, you know, feel free to just keep going all the way the length of it. But this kind of gives you, and then you're like going, oh my lord, that's just really busy. And that's kind of true. So now since I kind of took this one off, then let's take it. Oh. And I, you know, now even for me, I'm going, well, that's just really busy. So I might have to come back and figure out a way to tone it down, if that's the case, if I, if I can do that. See, the difference on this one, it's a, there's less wood information than there is here. So, and that's fine. So, And here again, once you get some stuff on here, then you can erase it and make it a little easier to see if you have all of your lines in there. And then I like to take it, I like big erasers, so we'll just do that. And then maybe, some, you know, and sometimes you can see some of your information a little bit better once your pencil lines are gone. But if there's something specific that you want to try to do that you put your pencil in there for, then... Just as a reminder, then you can go ahead and do that. But see, and part of it may have been how I was holding the, you know, looking at the branch, since I was looking at it sideways instead of straight on. <laughs> I just made a crazy looking branch, but that's so totally fun. You certainly don't have to have it look like that. So. There's always good examples of what to do and what not to do when drawing and learning new ways of doing things. So, okay. This way I can kind of see a little bit more about what I want to do. And avert your eyes if the <laughs> branch is making you dizzy. Oh my lord. So, okay. Wow. And see, when in doubt, if you're trying to figure out a solution to something you've just done, move on to something else. So we're going to come up here and work on the birdhouse. So if you want this one to be a little more uh, less weathered, then you, you don't have to put as much line work into the wood. I like the idea of having to where the slats really kind of look like they have a little space in between them. So I'm just putting another line right next to the line that I have. Just to give it some space. And here again, I like using the Ultra Fine Sharpie 
instead of using the fatter one because this I like the quality of it better and just you can make something thicker by adding more skinny lines together now if you were on a really graphic quality you know you can use the big one but it will definitely change the look of it mm -hmm. and I'll go over the little bird plank here too now remember too, while you're doing this, if something is looking strange, pick up your image and hold it out away from you so that you can kind of get a different perspective. Because sometimes when we're up close for so long, we can't see it really anymore and we think it looks great, you know, it doesn't look quite right. So then you just give yourself some perspective and you're going, oh, okay, I see what I need to do. Or, oh, hey, that's looking actually better than I thought. So and here, I'm just kind of filling this in because we know it's going to be dark in the birdhouse because I don't think they have uh, electricity. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes I still think I'm funny, but all right. Okay. And you can just, you know, we can just do add some, just some straight lines, kind of interspersed, just some hatching, straight up hatching. And, and now that you all know a little bit more about cross hatching, hatching, and then the cross contour lines and just mark making in general, just have fun with it and figure out what you'd like to do. And let's see. Hmm. You know, because even filling in the shingles here, I can do like multiple lines for one shingle and that kind of gives it an interesting look. And, you know, you'll just be creative and come up with your own ways of doing this, too. Because there may be certain things that I do that you don't you don't really like, and that's totally fine. I want you to come up with your own design. Because that's the whole point. We're giving you the tools so that you can really flourish and just really have fun with making your own thing. See, I like the kind of livery stuff, but feel free if you, you know, are really need to have straight lines, you know, feel free to use a ruler. I'm not going to stop you from doing that if that brings you joy. It's totally fine. Okay. Mm. You know, and things can look a little squirrely, and that's fine too. Distancy doesn't mean so disability. anyway, I'm just going to keep going. So you can do, and then uh, yeah, we'll do a little. And see, while I'm doing this other stuff, I'm still kind of thinking about what I want to do with my branch. It's jumping right out of me. But so now what we can do is I'm just going to do some long ones on this one here. I'm just kind of keeping it simpler than the other. Probably I should have started on a smaller scale <laughs> to get started just to kind of show you and then I might not have gotten this crazy with the big one, but that's okay. See how slowly coming together and just, and you can add as much information in your leaves as you want, or you can keep them simple. And you can always come back and add a heavy, dark line around certain things if you want. I'm wondering if I need to do something like that with the branch that might 
tone it down or it might make it really obnoxious. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so. And if you want something to seem darker, you can just keep adding some lines to it, or just if you want it to have some more depth and some more information. So that seems a bit. And you might go, well, I kind of like that, but not exactly because it does doesn't have as much contrast from the branch. Or it looks too similar, and that's fine. And you can come back and add more information to one. You know, this is then. So what we'll do is I'll finish doing this, and then. Since we have the basic lines on the branch, then I'm going to go in and do some cross contours here and just kind of give it a little more dimension. And I'm going to kind of make it a little darker, so because I want it to have a little more contrast. And if you want, you know, specific look in your leaves, you can add it or not. So I'm just going to add a few more. I think this leaf, to me, works better when it has fewer lines in it. So, but obviously it's, <laughs> it's hard for me not to do so many lines. So, I'm not really sure what I'm sitting right there, but okay. Hmm. And then I'll come back down to the uh, branch and figure out a way to not vibrate your eyeballs so much with it. So. So we're just going to bring that leaf into the branch. Okay. Okay. So what I can do now is to really, I need to add some more contrast to the branch so that it doesn't seem like they're just a whole bunch of lines. So I'm going to take part of it and just kind of go in that one area with more lines to make it a little darker. And then you just kind of figure out what pattern you kind of want to follow. And it doesn't have to be a continuous line. You can break it up. And you might have to kind of back away from it and figure out what line you're trying to follow. Because I'm not sure what I was doing. But just by adding a little more dark in there, that helps tone it down, strangely enough. In, in here, you can still change the line that you, if you want, but, but that's going to help tone it down, but here, still, I probably, I want to add, just for my own self, let's see, I'm going to add some more, just so that you can see what this is looking like when you add more lines next to it. It just kind of makes it darker and gives it a little more of a shadowy, shaded look. So, and then probably should have done that on the bottom first, but that's okay. So, So I'm going to come up here and kind of think about stuff and go, wow, why did I make those lines? But that's okay. Embrace the mistake. Keep going. See, I've learned as I go, too. And... Woo. Anyway. 
Okay, so today has, um, with this piece, has been kind of an example of how, like if something kind of gets out of hand, this is a way that you can actually problem solve and fix it. Because I know sometimes it's a little disconcerting when we do something with pin and it's totally not what we want, but instead of just um, throwing it away, there are ways to problem solve and fix it. So since the branch initially kind of got a little out of hand and up here I did some things with the leaves that I was really dark, what I did then to balance things out is I ended up making the leaves even bigger and then I of course took the branches here off the edge and so then by making these bigger and I had also used the fine tip, see this is what happens when you use the fine tip, which is right here, which is bigger if you add a lot of dark sometimes it really changes the look so I really didn't like that too much so what I did then is made the leaves themselves bigger and then did that with every leaf and then came in and then I was like some of this stuff I would make you know a little bit darker too but it still looks better than having really heavy black but that's okay we're still working with it so I went in here with the big fine tip and then added some heavy black to kind of balance it out and it's a little heavier here. So then, because my tree elements and leaves ended up becoming a lot darker than I originally intended, I left the birdhouse really just plain. You know, I did um, some lines in the hole to denote that it's darker in there, but I really kept it simple. And then I kept the bird really pretty simple too. So then it ends up balancing it out. It actually is not too bad. So I like it a lot better. But sometimes when things go not as planned, it's also a good learning experience to kind of figure out how you can get it to a place that you just keep working with it. You know, some this kind of stuff takes time anyway. So it's also good to kind of figure out a way to problem solve and get it to a place where you like it instead of starting all over. Now, if you did something right at the very beginning, that would be one thing, and then you could erase it or just start again. You know, if you had already done the pen, you couldn't erase it, but then you could just start another one. But it's also a good, just a good learning experience and problem solving just to kind of figure out a way to alter your image and to where you like it again. So, and you know, and I can add, some more in here just to kind of balance that out. So I think um, sometimes it's kind of a good thing for me when things that I do don't really turn out as planned to kind of help you know that it happens to me too. <laughs> happens to us all and you just keep going and embrace the mistake and make something new and, and sometimes it can be even more interesting than what you originally intended. All right, so I wanted to show you I did a couple of more examples just to kind of give you a variety. And as you can see, this one, as we talked about earlier, it looks better once I kept working on it and incorporated the stuff that I really didn't like into something new. And so this is actually a lot better than it was. So just keep going. And then this one I did um, a little less information. My bird. <laughs> his tail is a little funny, but it just, I just say it looks like he's flying, you know, and in motion. So just, as always, embrace the mistake and just kind of learn something from it. Now this one I wanted to show you a few things on the bird. You know, I did a little more stippling, you know, which is just the little dots to kind of add some texture and color so it makes him look a little like he has a darker head and tail and some of his wing and a wider belly and then as you can see on the post on this one what I was talking about is just doing the long strokes the long lines for the wood grain so everything all of these kind of have a variation you know and this one of course has the least because all of the branches have most of the information we needed to have some lighter points and then, the, you know, I did some cross-hatching to show some sh shadows under here and then just a little bit of 
hatch mark, you know, to kind of show a little bit of the wood texture and shadow on the side. And here again, you can do, you know, any of this, you know, is more, you can do more or less of that. But what I wanted to show you down here, this is kind of a simple way of kind of using scribbling to um, do some leaves. So I wanted to make this kind of look like either, it can either be the tops of trees, so this pole's really tall, or it can be close to the ground and have some shrubs and bushes. So basically, all I did was I just have, just kind of do some scribbling lines, and then would kind of come in and just add a little more, just to kind of add some depth to it or some dark spots. And see, you know, you can do curly cues, whatever you want, but this just kind of gives a really fast, you know, a little bit of texture to kind of, you know, simulate some bushes. So, see, really kind of, there's just really some simple things. You can do the little simple scribbling just to kind of get your suggestion of bushes or trees. And then if you want to make it darker, then you just keep going over places. But you just kind of get it to where you want. And there is really no right way to do this. So, and this can kind of be fun. So, and you can just go right off the page, go right to the edge. I have a board underneath here just to keep it stiff. So you can go right on top or you can use another paper underneath just so you're not stopping short. I always like to go all the way off. So you can use everything in here. You can use cross hatching, hatching, cross contour, stippling, anything that suits your fancy. And it obviously does not have to be super elaborate. So, but then you get the idea. So just to recap, start with your pencil, draw, you know, your just your basic outline of everything, then get your pen, go over your pencil lines, and then start adding the detail. And just take your time. And then embrace the mistake. And, you know, this one was a really good example of when things kind of go awry, or at least from what you had originally planned, and just kind of go with it and work with it. Really good problem solving is good for your brain. You know, there's lots of problem solving in art. So, all right. And now, remember, you can do this. And I look forward to seeing them when we get back in the classroom. All right, everybody, stay healthy, and we will see you next time.